So this is a quick video to record um, how a skip condition works in Panic. Now, you might have an, 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 uh, an instance where your robot is doing something and then there's a sensor or some type of, of condition that will say to the robot, if you continue on your path or go to that position, you're gonna have issues. So say like an empty, uh, an empty part feeder or something. So instead of sending the robot there, you send it somewhere else to a second part feeder or something along that lines, or uh, kind of a, not as a reset, but you just don't want that ro the robot executing that line of code. So what I've set up here is a simple little setup with a robot basically going back and forth. And we'll be able to see the kinematics in the, with the, with the RoboGuide software, which makes this really nice because it's hard to understand. But here's what the basic programming would look like. First of all, with the skip condition, the skip condition has to be in pairs. You have to have first put a label and say to, to define the skip condition and basically a, 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 a motion programming uh, line right after that with the skip label after that. Um, because what this is going to say is, is this is the skip when you execute this line of code. If the digital input is on, then we're going to let the robot know skip, skip, skip line three and go r right to the next line. Otherwise, we're going to skip over, you know, line, to the to label one. So the skip condition is true. Skip the line with the skip skipper and then execute. If it's false, then we're gonna we're gonna run the line of code and basically act as a jump label over the line. Kind of confusing, isn't it? As I walk through it, though, it should make sense. So first, let me, I'm going to put this in dual mode. So shift, display, double. So you can see the the I.O. So right now the I.O. is is on. But I'm going to turn it off. And I'm going to execute this line of code. Okay. So I'm, I'm just going to do it in step mode so you can kind of see it. And then I'm going to do it in automatic just to show you. So if I hit shift forward, it goes down. I'm at line two. I hit shift forward. And it just went over that skip condition line, and it shouldn't be true. So now if I hit forward, look where the at sign is. I'm at P3. So P. So it just went over, and now look where the cursor is. It jumped label of line 5 right to lane, lane, uh, to line 6. And if I hit shift forward again, it's going to execute that label, then, then go to the next line. Okay, let me um, get that off. All right, so now if I go to the off, turn on the skip condition. So I got to hit shift off and turn on. Now the simulation is on. Go over here and I'm going to go back to the top of my job. Shift forward. Yes, I want to go back to the top. Shift forward. I go back to the first line. I go down. And now watch this. I hit the skip condition. And the robot will start to go to line three and then realize, oh, no, I'm supposed to skip this line. And now watch, it goes to line four because the skip condition tells me I do not want to execute this line of code here. I want to continue on. And this is, again, good for avoiding something or getting your robot out of the way. Or again, if you're going to an empty part feeder or maybe you, 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 you the part's not there, it keeps the robot from doing something. It allows it to continue its process without going all and stopping and have, if throwing a fault. It basically gives it two. It's a way of setting up two options for a for a line of motion. So let me go in automatic to show you first what the the non skip condition looks like with the kinematics. Oh yeah, I always forget the shift. It doesn't you know? This is why you should always have a teach pendant because you're used to letting go of shift. Um, I always forget that. So I'm gonna turn the teach pendant off and I'm gonna go up here to hit play and watch the the motion type that gets set up. So that's the motion in, with, with the skip condition not employed. Now, once I turn on the skip condition, and now I'll run it, you, can, you might be able to see the difference. So you can see it's, there's that condition. And you can see how I avoid, avoided that other part. So again, think of when you're using a skip condition, Go back to single so I can make it bigger. So, um, again, when you're using a skip condition, well, now we know how it works. 
Let's figure out how we put it in. So if I delete this, I'm just, in, I'm just going to uh, delete this line. Because where we, or I'll just reinsert it. I want to insert a new thing. So if I'm on this line, if I hit instruction, the next page, this is where I find my skip. So if I hit skip, I have it equal to another, I have a digital input equal something, uh, digital input not equal something. If I go in here and say not equal, not equal, I can have it set up to a register, digital input, uh, digital output, digital input, robot output. So there's the sky's the limit, group IO, whatever, anything that you want, even an error number. So if you know the error number, you could you could trigger this. So or per, you know, so you know, argue, uh, so analog input as well, um, you know, do not equal three, uh, or when this, uh, when I'll just do the opposite state, when when this doesn't equal on, then it will work, or you can do it off the on uh, positive rising edge or negative rising, or off on the, uh, the falling edge, um, if that makes sense. So you have a lot of flexibility. So I'll just do it that one because it's a little bit different. And then to add that onto a, the, the back end, you say, go out, find a, your your linear instruction, uh, your motion instruction, and on the back end of it. So like here on this here, if I hit on the back end, on the termination type, hit choice, way on the back end, hit choice. It gives me all the options. So there's my skip lab label. Um, you can also do a skip label PR that will also execute um, a data register. Uh, so those are, I just did the skip label. But that's how you would add that is just by putting that in and then putting the label that you want. Um, so I'm gonna get function undo and just undo, you know, maybe a, so yeah, choice, no choice, no option, goes away. Um, and I'll just make this choice on. When you're using a skip condition, you need basically four lines of code or more, depending on what you want, but definitely this, where this, you put the skip condition in first and the next line of code should have the skip label in it. And then the jump label as well around what you want, what needs to be skipped every time this is, this is false. So the skip condition only goes true when you want to bypass the, the, the line and code with, which has the skip label. I hope that makes sense. At least if you don't walk through the, the steps and see the difference when I turn the conditions on and off, but that's the basic line of code, basic line of code for you to see. I hope this was helpful. Um, I, I highly recommend Adam Wiley's video on the same topic. He goes a lot more in depth in some other things. Um, I just decided to record one that was a little more approachable maybe to a beginning uh, school user. Um, so hope this was helpful. Have